We should probably get the pickup. Go drive over and see what Leg Arms has been doing. Uh, I just hear a bunch of equipment over there running at the quad set, and uh, last I saw, he ran over with a jackhammer. So I'm gonna go find out what's going on over there. First, today's video is brought to you by Simply Safe. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute after I eat this cookie. And a couple of minutes later. Ah, we better go. Let's get the pickup. <laughs> what is going on here? That guy, you just can't keep him down. Look at this madness that he is doing. <laughs> well, it's all the concrete's going away. He's working hard at it. He's got the TV 380 working hard. Nice, good for him. I'm actually not here to help him though. Looks like he's got this mostly covered. I'm here to go steal a battery out of the old 435 Big Bud and take it over to the 525 Big Bud because we stole the battery from that because the 435 battery wasn't doing so good. But there's still fertilizer in one of our air drills. We saved that for hemp. So update on hemp. We held off seeding it because the ground is so dry. It is so dry. The stuff that we seeded, some of it's not even coming up right now because we basically were seeding the dry dirt. The stuff that did hit moisture, we had good seeding conditions at the beginning. That's coming out of the ground, that's looking good. It's gonna stop growing here real soon if we don't get some moisture. We called off the hemp. I talked to the, the hemp guys, IND Hemp, um, and it was just they just basically said, you know what, at this point, you're looking at a complete failure of a hemp crop if you try it. It's just, unless just the climate absolutely changes in this area and we get a ton of rain, which is, not what the outlook says. All the algorithms, the computer models say we're dry till September. So that's our entire growing season. So no hemp, but we have fertilizer still on the air seeder that we left there because we were going to use that for the hemp. But I got to get rid of that because I want to put the buds in the building. So I'm going to get the battery out of that tractor, put it in the 525, which has the card on it, which has the fertilizer in it, and then take it. I'm going to wing it out and just drive over the top of our spring wheat over here and top dress it with the fertilizer until it runs out. And then there's rain today, hopefully. They're saying like a quarter inch. I know it's like nothing, but that would probably be enough to hopefully pull that urea down into the ground and lock it in. So I'm just, maybe we'll get more rain than that, but I got a couple hours before the rain comes. It's windy, I'm gonna get to it. I've talked enough. I'm obviously dropping the toolbar in the ground. We're just spreading on the surface. I just want to make sure everything over here is locked up. Looks good, looks good. All right, let's spread some fertilizer. Drive over some spring wheat. Simple, simple job. <laughs> Top dressing, I guess it works. I do have a whole block to run, but I don't really care. One whole section basically is not getting any fertilizer because when I started out, that ended the fan running fast enough and it plugged it up. That's happened a lot of times this year, I don't know more than it usually should so but with that said it doesn't really matter I just have a little bit in the tank as you can see so I'm just watching my monitor there and uh, as it slowly trickles down I'll get it inside the tank and scrape the rest of it over from that side see it all out take it back to the shop drop the manifold clean everything up pull the battery out of the cart and then take it over and park it I I wish we had a building we could put all this in it'd be amazing if we had a building big enough to run these air drills in but we just don't yet this could have been the year. It could still be. I shouldn't say could have been. I don't want to be all Debra De Debbie Downer. But if we could get an average crop, an average crop with the prices that are currently out there right now for wheat. Oh, it just changed everything. But the good Lord knows what we need and the good Lord's going to provide. And I'll tell you what, we've been blessed thoroughly last year, even with how bad of a year it was. We came out okay. And even this year, if it's a complete drought and we lose it all, with the insurance and everything, we'll still come out okay. We'll farm another year. Just in farming, you just always think about, there's gonna be that one year eventually where you get ahead and take care of a lot of the debt you got. And this could be the year. It's just, unfortunately, it's, we just have a dry year. So maybe we'll spend a lot of time delayed. That'd be amazing. It's all good though. No, nope, I'm happy. This is good. Farming's great. We're, we're making it happen. A lot to be thankful for. There she goes. All right, I'll stop up here on this pass. Claim inside the tank, 
shovel all that fertilizer over to the meters that are working, and then see the rest of that out. Could lose my hat. Side here. Oh. Is that even worth doing? I don't know. Not much. That's like barely a half gallon of a bucket. That's okay. We'll still seed it out. All right. Now for our video sponsor, Simply Safe. So Simply Safe is an easy to use security system that you order online, ships in a box just like this, right to your doorstep, and is full of all kinds of cool sensors and gadgets like here. Now all this stuff is wireless, so there's no running wires to your walls, drilling holes, any of that. It's all wireless. And they talk to your base station, which is easily controlled by your keypad. Arm it. Simply Safe on. Home. It'll talk to you, or you can control it wirelessly through your Simply Safe app. The system is quite simple, really. It starts with your door jam, so when you open and close the door, you know. Or if someone smashes your window, that ah, will hear it and let you know. Or if you happen to have a flood event and your expensive computer systems are starting to go underwater, you'll know. If you get high levels of carbon dioxide, you'll know. Need to remotely lock or unlock your deadbolt? No problem. Just press the button on your app. Move to your house. No problem. Motion detector. It'll see it. Fire? Smoke detector. It'll catch it. Freezing temperatures in your plumbing? It'll let you know. Need video surveillance? Not a problem. 1080p, wide angle lens, two-way audio communication, outdoor camera. Wireless, really easy to adjust, maneuver, put on the side of a building, whatever you want to do, it's there. And it'll record it. Which, combined with the convenient Simply Safe app, lets you view the footage anywhere at any time, live to your phone. Now, for less than $1 a day, no contract, you can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system by signing up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Just visit simplysafe.com slash Welker Farms to learn more. All right, let's go spraying. That's it, just cleaned her up. Takes her all clean, rollers are out. Let's run this over to the other yard where Leg Arms is uh, pulverizing concrete. We'll go park this tractor. I should say, park the air drill, bring the tractor back, put the tractor inside the building because these things at least we can keep the buds in the buildings. We've got enough space for that. This tractor ran really good this year. There's something going on with one of the cylinders or multiples. It could be an injector. We really need to get that figured out because you don't want an injector to go real bad inside of a cylinder wall. If they spray the diesel pattern, irregular, irregular, irregularity, irregularity. Anyways, uh, it can wash the sil sleeves out, the cylinder sleeves, the pistons. And what ends up happening is uh, your lubricating properties, your oil that would normally normally be helping that cylinder not wear out or the piston and piston rings, it's not there because it's being washed by diesel fuel. And it can leak diesel into your crankcase too. So you can burn a piston up, not worth it. So we gotta get that checked, find out what's going on there. A couple gauges need cleaned up and then the pin striping on this thing, I gotta get, I gotta get that figured out too. Something going on with that. Other than that, this tractor runs really good. And oh yeah. And there's the wiring harness issue with all the GPS and stuff that's gotta get figured out. But we're done. So we have to worry about that for a few months. Collect a little commission. All right, put the series three away. The forty three fifty and the seven hundred. Go park them. Get there. I might not be at two tenths yet, but that's enough to get some of that seed wet that 
wasn't in moisture when we seeded. That's good. I'm happy. I just need about another three hours of this. Get up to that half inch. That'd be amazing. But yeah, rain. First rain, really, since we seeded. And we need it desperately. Well, I'm back. So we got about, what, three to four tenths of rain, somewhere in that area, over a period of about 12 hours. It ran kind of sideways because the wind was blowing hard, but there's a little bit of moisture if you dig in the ground. So that's a good thing because there's seed in the field that never germinated. A lot of our tire tracks didn't grow, just didn't have the moisture. So now that should start that process. I'm in a pea field right now. I'm putting out grass herbicide. We're trying to get rid of cheat grass and wild oats. There's not a lot of wild oats, but there's definitely cheat grass around. So it's a cheap way, cheaper way to take care of your grasses. That's one thing we love about pulse crops is we can do that rotation and then spray this herbicide. So I got the old Apache here. I'm gonna go fire up the mix mate. We've done a little bit of work to our spray trailer here. Got all new brakes and pads and wheel, wheel seals and all kinds of good stuff. On the back of this trailer, they were shot. And then we got our nice Duraplast tanks on here. So with the combination of all this, it should make for some sweet spraying. So hopefully this all works well, but let's hook this baby up. Let's get this mix bait going. Let's run some of this uh, clapping them in the sprayer and get to town. So I'm only running one product right now, which is really simple. Two, I guess we want to control water, but that's the carrier. Look at this shuttle over here. So I got to run through valve number two, which is this hose. You're right over here, all the way to here and to here. So the mix bait, when it's ready, we'll open those valves and start using the suction side of this two inch pump, three inch pump, three inch pump, pull the chemical into the pump and then through. And then it's got a flow valve over here that'll open up and that'll allow the water, the carrier, to mix with it too and pump water and chemical into the sprayer as needed. And it does it all automatically. I just have to set up the prescription, I hit go, and it goes. second year running the mix bait. It took a little bit to get figured out. There's a little bit of a learning curve. It's more on the software side of things and then just kind of learning the concept of how all the plumbing works and do's and don'ts. But as you can see here, I'm walking away. I've got the tablet right here and uh, I'm not even by the sprayer right now. And I can see exactly how many gallons are being pumped in, how much product's being in there, how much time I have left, the voltage of my battery, about everything. Granted, I wouldn't walk very far because you kind of want to be around this in case you got to turn off. But if I need to, I hit a pause button on here. It'll shut all the valves instantly. And then you can find out what's going on if something's not right. Five of our pea acres looks like this. Nothing coming out of the ground. And I'm hoping that this moisture gets to those pea seeds and starts germinating. There's a lot of ground like that. I think that we'll get it going, but it's going to make for a lot of uneven stages in our crops about two weeks behind, three weeks behind. So when it comes time to harvest, it's be kind of a problem because peas, you kind of want them to be all ready at the same time. Because you don't want too ripe mixed with not ripe because the too ripe might start to shell out by the time you can harvest the not ripe. Make sense? And the only thing you can do then is you gotta desiccate the field. So you gotta spray the whole thing out to get it all ripe so you can harvest it. So we'll see what happens when it comes to harvest, but it's gonna make things interesting. All because of moisture. Changes everything. We're just about to finish pumping the water in, so let's see what the main valve does here. So it's closing off the water, I'm going to turn the pump off. I see foam just starting to come out of the sprayer. Right on the dot. Save and finish. Now Raven. Now owned by CNH Industrial. So this is now technically part of Case IH New Holland. Amazing. Didn't see that day coming. But it makes things easy. So I'll uh, 
small rain cloud came over and uh, right when I pulled it to fill up, it's gonna be gone in just a few minutes here, but I was gonna get rain on out there. But as you can see here, <laughs> I'm filling the sprayer, I'm not even out there. I just went out and quickly fired the pumps up, opened the valves, turned the mix mate on, got back in here and I've got the tablet in my sprayer cap and it is doing all the mixing and pumping for me. I just gotta sit and watch outside here. So if something goes wrong, I gotta jump out real quick and shut it off, but I never thought I'd be doing that. That's pretty slick. I don't have to be standing out there in the cold, in the rain. Oh. Okay. I'll run it back and fix that. I'll tell you one thing, I have not been that impressed with this boom. It has seen a lot of acres. It's seen some abuse. It's just not a very tough boom. It just flexes like crazy, and the cracks just keep appearing everywhere. At least it's iron, not aluminum. It's a lot easier to take care of. So let's run this back, weld that up, clean it up. Might inspect for some more cracks. Grab a bite to eat and keep going at it. It's a good thing we're doing this. The grass is growing bad. We got cheat grass that's just starting to head out. Probably should have been sprayed about four days ago. So, but that's okay because you know what? I'm doing it now. That's better than not doing it at all. I right, throw this patch back. Like the other side's uh, starting to crack and break out as well. So I'll flip around, back it in, and do the same on the other side and tighten it up, and then hopefully we'll be good to go. But yeah, we've had to do a lot of modifications to these booms over the years. Had to rebuild that whole joint, had to reinforce angle iron all over here and there, and on both sides. It just, just keeps cracking in these areas. It's a very low profile boom, but it just takes so much twisting. It's just amazing how much it flexes and twists like in the field. You don't even have to be going through that rough of ground or that fast. The thing is just, but you know what? I guess airplane wings are designed like that too. So, all right, let's get this done. Just put that gauge on there, brand new. And it's pegged at like 150 PSI or 140. It doesn't even, it's beyond its reading. I didn't even look at it. I just bought it, installed it, and it's broke. So I don't know what my pressure is, but I'm just gonna match my speeds. I should be okay. So I gotta send that back. But while I was down there, the exhaust pipe's right there, so it's really hot. So I burnt myself twice trying to screw it off to take a closer inspection at it. But then my arms, oh, right under my tricep just burning like piercing pain i'm like what is going on and on my forearm right here and then it dawned on me the air cleaner box is made out of fiberglass i just rubbed fiberglass all over my skin Ugh, hate fiberglass terrible it's like about 250 gallons in the tank so i'm gonna go ahead and just put 700 more in it let's hook her up and uh, i'll show you on the mix mate it's pretty cool i can just type in 700 gallons and it'll automatically calibrate and uh, assign how much product I need for that. It's easy as that, as long as I type in the right numbers. I shouldn't have an overflowing tank. Or if I read the tank level correctly. We'll find out in a second. Good, didn't overfill. 
And it looks like a nice full tank to me. There's some of our winter wheat. It's patchy. There's areas where nothing's growing and there's areas where it's not bad. I, I don't know. Anybody's really tell. If it rains a lot this year, then we would have been better off to just have spring wheat. If it doesn't rain very much this year, then we'd probably be better off having winter wheat. But we're probably gonna have to spray this winter wheat before harvest because there's not much cover in areas. And those areas are just gonna be flush with weeds. There's just nothing we can do about it. So that's gonna be the biggest downfall of uh, having thin winter wheat. If anybody's gamble right now, there's no, no for sure on anything. Something I've always wanted to stop and take a look at. I've farmed over this for a number of years now. And I don't know, I, I'm pretty sure it's not what I think it might be, but <laughs> is this a crater? It's uh, the ground is raised up evenly, about a 50 foot radius around the whole thing, just like an impact. And uh, the center is the low spot right there, and I don't. I mean, there is a lot of natural gas exploration in this area. It could be an old well that they dug and just removed the shack, and that's just the way it, the ground kind of moved. But it's just interesting that it slopes up like a donut around the entire thing and then drops off into the center. I need a metal detector. We can find some iron in there. Unlikely. It's a crater. It'd be a pretty like, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Crater? No crater? I bet it's not a crater. Man made, I'm sure. But let's pretend it's a crater. I'll call it crater. Crater field. Just don't drive into it going 15 miles an hour in the sprayer. I've done that. You'll hit the ceiling. At least it's kind of soft. <laughs>